Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. One of the lessons of World War II was that to win a fight on the ground, one had to win it in the air. While the ground forces went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy, the air forces flew behind enemy lines in order to strike logistical targets, such as access roads and bridges, as well as supply convoys. The A-10 was designed to achieve this objective to an impressive degree, since it was made to engage enemy tanks and armor from a very low altitude. The aircraft is primarily built around a GAU-8 Avenger Gatling gun, which is capable of repelling ground-based enemy attacks. The Gatling gun is a 30 millimeter heavy metal weapon with seven rotating barrels and two hydraulic motors. Each barrel is seven and a half feet long and weighs a massive 70 pounds. And the gun can fire at a mammoth rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. The ground crews reload the A-10's magazine manually, and reloading could take hours. Each of its seven barrels is loaded, fired, and reloaded as the cylinder rotates by means of a cam system. All precision guided and unguided weapons are mounted to the aircraft by trained ordnance specialists including a paveway bomb that is fixed to one of the A-10 wing's hardpoints during loading. The 30mm gun utilizes an adapter for loading ammunition, which may be uploaded and downloaded to the gun system simultaneously. To be able to deliver precision fire and avoid hitting friendly allies and forces, the aircraft was designed to be slow but tough. It has several fail-safes built into its construction that protects its pilot by using a titanium tub capable of withstanding high explosions and armor-piercing strikes. It is robust and durable, possessing excellent maneuverability, electronic countermeasures, widely separated jet engines, and manual backup flight control systems. It has a nearly half-century history of ensuring the safety of ground troops with its overwhelming precision strikes and firepower by providing a Close Air Support System, or CAS. The military can fly the A-10 Warthog at low altitudes to hit targets in what is known as strafings.
Its impressive gun power makes hitting a target at close range quite devastating. It helps unleash a catastrophic attack on a heavily armed enemy's armor and gives the military a tactical advantage during combat. It can operate in low ceiling and low visibility conditions for lengthy periods of time while loitering close to a combat area. The attack aircraft can fire hundreds of rounds from seven barrels of the gun from an altitude of about 4,000 feet. And the pilot can achieve incredible accuracy and absolute precision on the target area from this low altitude. Due to the thoroughness of its upkeep, this aircraft has maintained its amazing capabilities for a very long time. However, the relationship between pilots and maintenance crew is critical to mission success. There is a checklist of procedures to be carried out by maintenance crews and it requires some serious effort to keep the engine running, as it is particularly vulnerable to wear from vibration, friction, hot internal temperatures, corrosion, and physical damage. <laughs> the conditions of the Gatling gun are checked for misfeeding. Loose bolts, proper alignment of weapons, and all other necessary checks to ensure a safe mission. The durability and fuel economy of the engines is increased by routine maintenance, which keeps all spinning parts balanced and the vibration level at a minimum. The engine's turbine blades, bearings, and control systems require regular maintenance, and in certain situations, the air forces can perform a complete overhaul on critical parts of the aircraft. This maintenance process adopts a multi-layered approach and can involve refurbishing some components, which could take a long time. Despite the impressive capabilities of the 50-year-old A-10 Warthog, the United States Air Force has been on the lookout for its potential replacement. One option is the A-29 attack aircraft, which is powered by a turboprop and is a very versatile aircraft that can operate in austere environments and rugged terrain. It has advanced communication systems that help in sharing intelligence information with other aircraft and ground forces, and can operate as part of a large network of fleets. It is also capable of being loaded with deadly 50 caliber machine guns and some advanced precision bombs. Incredibly, its lower cost of operation, ease of flying, and flexible configuration make it an excellent potential replacement for the A-10 Warthog. Before every mission, 
the pilot performs a pre-flight routine check to ensure that there are no identifiable potential problems on the A-29 Super Tucano. The A-29 has impressive maneuverability, especially at low altitudes. Despite its 3.9 meter height, 11.38 meter length, and 11.2 meter width, It has a takeoff distance of about 550 meters and a landing distance of about 860 meters, with increased clearance to enable it to take off and land on unconventional runways. The A-29 Light Attack Super Tucano aircraft also has an advanced integral weapon system. This gives it the capability to shoot down drones and cruise missiles through the accurate delivery of precise guided bombs on target. So on flight with the flesh. Impressively, the Super Tucano can land in unconventional environments, like a riverbed or a stretch of highway. This capability to land in austere areas enhances its purpose of providing close air support to the members of the Air Force. Apart from the A-10 and the A-29, the United States Air Force makes use of another light attack aircraft known as the AV-8B. This Harrier is one of the most flexible aircraft since it exhibits Short Vertical Takeoff and Landing, or SVTOL, making it one of the most versatile fleets in the armed forces. To improve the tactical operations of the first generation of aircraft, making the AV-8B to be created with the goal of increasing flexibility and tactical mobility while lowering costs. As a light attack craft, it can carry up to six MK-82 500-pound bombs as a standard air-to-ground, or AG, load, and some four AIM-9LM Sidewinder missiles as standard air-to-air -air ammunition. It has one fuselage-mounted 25-millimeter gun system and has provisions for carrying up to 9,000 pounds of ordnance on seven stations. The aircraft can also be equipped with a jam-resistant, all-weather detection digital tracking radar to provide day and night adverse weather capability. The radar provides high resolution and a long range surface mapping and detection in the air to surface role as is equally capable of land-based and sea-based targets. The Harrier was designed with vertical landing and short takeoff capability in mind. To undertake a vertical landing operation, the aircraft must be in forward flight mode. It needs to hover by remaining still in a specific position before descending vertically on that point. The Harrier, in contrast to the A-10, may be deployed for either ground attack or air interdiction missions, depending on its loadout. And it doesn't have to fly close to the targets since it may bomb them safely from a distance. The United States has different categories of fighter jets in its fleets of light attack aircraft each having some uniqueness in its capabilities and ordnance. 
Together, they help ensure the success of missions by finding, tracking, and attacking targets on their own or with the support of ground forces. That's the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and we'll see you in our next video.